there had been a live action production for primetime of Spider-Man years before. And it was not particularly successful. And some people think it was rather cheesy, but it was a production. I can't remember for what network. I want to say CBS, but I'm not sure about that. And uh, the show was a big hit in Japan. The Japanese loved it. So fast forward to when we're at Marvel and I'm doing G.I. Joe and Transformers and all these shows, and we're using an animation studio in Japan called Toei. Toei coincidentally has the largest live action production company at the time. So the head of the animation studio, uh, or the live action studio, Mr. Watanabe, knew Stan and admired him and called him up one day and said, look, I've got a show that we've been doing and it's very successful in Japan. I want to send it to you and maybe you and your associate, Margaret, your boss, might be interested in doing it for the United States. So that was the backdrop. So Stan walked into my office one day with a three-quarter inch video cassette and he says, Maggie, I think I've found a hit for us. I said, okay. He says, take a look. And he just put it on my desk. And it sat there a couple days, and finally I looked at it. And I walked down to his office. I said, Stan, you know that cassette you gave me? It was all in Japanese. He said, I know, but wasn't it funny? I said, well, as a matter of fact, it was. And I said, it was pretty uh, crazy. And he says, yeah, well, why don't we, look, we can get the rights from Watanabe, and um, why don't we do something with it? And I said, okay, here's what we'll do. I'll authorize $25,000. Let's take the show and cut a trailer out of it, a presentation tape, and add U.S. voices and create a, a story, and we'll go out and present it. Now, we, we didn't have a name. For, I don't remember what we called it. We had a name for it, a U.S., an, an English name. I pitched it to all the networks, and one network executive pulled me aside and said, Margaret, outside of Stan's earshot, I can't believe you're pitching this to us. You, who've done Emmy award-winning programs like the Smurfs and Muppet Babies, how could you show me this crap? <laughs> I'm like, she said, it's terrible, it's cheesy, it's violent, it's just, cra it's just outrageous. I said, really? I, because I think it's benign and I think every kid wants to be a superhero. And I said, and the monsters are, when you say, violent. The monsters are really silly. And I think it's kind of funny because it reminded me of the way I felt when I saw Creatures of the Black Lagoon. See how those moments in your life are, make a difference? So Stan and I pitched it to all three networks and we were resoundingly sent our way and told, ugh, it's horrible. So Stan called Mr. Watanabe and said, I'm sorry, we haven't been successful. We'll relinquish the rights. Years later, several years later, when I was at Fox, I was with Heim Saban in his offices, and he had provided us, I was looking for a specific show. I needed a show for 7.30 in the mornings, Monday through Friday, to compete with all the comedy Tom and Jerry kids, or Tom and Jerry and all the shows that were out in syndication. And I looked at three quarters of the stack of cassettes and I Stan, I mean, uh, uh, Heim stuck his head in and asked how I was doing and I said, Stan, you know, Stan, I'm sorry. I said, Heim, these shows are fine, they're cute, they're sweet. It's, it was animation from around the world. I said, but this isn't what I need. He says, well, what do you need? And I said, well, I need something that's funny, but with action, because I'm counter-programming, and 7.30 in the morning is a great time period, but I, I, I will only succeed if I have something really different and fun with action. He says, one moment, please, darling. <laughs> and he raced out, and he came running back with a video cassette. He says, don't get mad at me, but take a look. You might like this. It might be what you're looking for. And I put that cassette on, and it was the exact same footage that Mr. Watanabe had sent us that Stan had shown me. And that was the footage that we ultimately created Power Rangers out of that show. And it was a big hit, although nobody believed in it. I believed in it. Heim believed in it. 
Heim's wife believed in it. I don't think there were very many other people that believed in it, and certainly my bosses at Fox didn't believe in it. When I first pitched the show to my boss at Fox, Jamie Kellner, who was president of Fox Network, but Jamie wouldn't let me green light Power Rangers. He thought it was terrible. But he, he said to me, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. Shoot a pilot. We didn't shoot pilot. We didn't have the money for pilots and kids programming. Shoot a pilot and test it. And if it tests well, I'll let you do it. I said, I don't have the budget for a pilot. He says, I'll give you $100,000. I thought, OK. So I walked out of there thinking, uh, 100000 what am I going to do? So I called up Heim, and I told him the truth. I said, Jamie doesn't like it. He doesn't think it'll work, but he's given me a challenge. If we can do a pilot and prove that kids like it, then they'll let me green light it. And I said, but I don't have enough money. And I said, how much have you got? I said, 100000 He says, I'll put in 100 so we did a pilot, and we only had enough money to do <laughs> 17 minutes. So it wasn't even a full pilot. And then we tested it. And I watched the kids behind the glass at the testing. And of course, the little boys went crazy. But that's not when I knew it would be a hit. I knew it would be a hit when there were two little girls in the room with them. There were girls in the room. And a couple little girls were talking. And one little girl said, I love the pink ranger. And the other little girl said, well, I like the yellow ranger. And then the first little girl said, well, I like both of them because they kick butt. This is what the little kids were saying. And I said, it's a hit. Oh. Done. So I went back to Jamie, and I s told him the results. And he says, ah, I, don't, I think it's a big mistake. Big mistake. So how much are you going to pay him in a license fee? And I had almost no money. He said, I told him, he said, well, how are you going to get the show for that amount of money? I said, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. So I went to Heim, and I said, okay, I can order the show, but I can only pay $15,000 an episode. He says, what? I said, sorry, and I want a piece of the merchandising for the company. And Heim stepped up to his credit. I even have a recollection that he told me he had mortgaged his house, which mortified me. But we both believed in it. Well, we had no idea it would become the hit that it was, but we thought it would be successful. Obviously, later when it was a hit, we renegotiated that deal. But uh, people ask me all the time why I thought it would work. And I thought it would work because I remembered what it was like to be a kid. And then I thought, what kid wouldn't want to turn into a superhero? I mean, didn't we all dream of that? I dreamed of being Wonder Woman as a child. Today it's a big hit. 